afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry Rio here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, I am talking about what a normal meeting typically looks like, because I've gotten this question a few times, and I just kind of wanted to go over what someone who is not in Civil Air Patrol should expect from a squadron meeting. So if you are already familiar with what squadron meetings are like, and you want more information about some suggestions or best practices associated with planning squadron meetings, please feel free to check out that link in the iCard. And I hope that serves as a useful resource for you if you are actively helping with planning the, your unit's agenda or if you just want to know a little bit more about how meetings are actually planned. But in this video, I'm talking about what you should expect. Each week, you should expect an agenda from someone in your unit's chain of command. That could be from the cadet commander, that could be from the deputy commander for cadets, the deputy commander for seniors, or even your squadron commander. But it's going to come from someone who is in one of those squadron leadership roles. And the information that's contained in it is typically the times that things are happening, the UOD, or the duty uniform for that day, or the uniform of the day, in addition to any announcements or upcoming events that everyone in the unit should be aware of. When you first arrive to the meeting, what you should expect is that someone who is part of the cadet staff will greet you if you're a cadet or if you're a senior member, like a prospective senior member, then someone should greet you if you've told them ahead of time before you're showing up to their meeting. It's typically better to coordinate ahead of time, especially during COVID right now. But when we go to in-person meetings, sometimes people will just look online, they'll see the meeting and they'll be like, oh, I'm gonna show up. And if that's the case and you're just showing up to a meeting, that's fine, no worries. But people may not be as prepared as when you let them know ahead of time and then they can come with materials to kind of brief you about what Civil Air Patrol is and have like their PowerPoints ready or informational materials that they might want to share with you as you are there at the meeting. When the meeting is actually getting started, they typically do something called opening formation, which means they get into little groups of people, they line up and they stand at attention and they do reporting in. So they say all present and accounted for, for each element, elements report, like each row is called an element and they report up to the flight sergeant and then the flight sergeants report to the first sergeant of the unit and the first sergeant reports to the cadet commander and then they go to their posts, which means the flight sergeants move to the back of the flight, the flight commanders move to the front of the flight. There might be opening announcements um, and the, the cadet commander might have the squadron commander come out if the squadron commander is present and available to have some discussion items and announcements. And typically it takes about five minutes to do. Some units do the Pledge of Allegiance ahead of their meeting or the national anthem is played with a color guard. It, it varies between units. And one important note that I do want to include about opening formation is that if you are inside, you're really not supposed to be wearing your cover. Only when you're outside should you be wearing your cover when, when you're doing opening formation at your unit meetings. Also, another point is if you are doing the Pledge of Allegiance and you are in an Air Force style uniform, you should not be putting your hand over your heart and you should be just standing silently. And while you're indoors, if you are in uniform and the Pledge of Allegiance is being recited, then you just stand and face the flag. But if you are outside, then you would salute during that Pledge of Allegiance. That was going a little bit more into details about opening formation. But after you finish opening formation, it typically goes into the first block. And that could be a number of different subjects. And as you will know from what the person in the chain of command has sent to you, it could be PT or physical training where there might be testing towards people getting their next achievement. It could just be like doing volleyball or maybe kickball, some kind of team oriented sport to get everybody active and excited or ultimate frisbee is a very popular one as well. And I, I like PT nights. I know some senior members don't like to be as actively involved with the, the PT portion and they just typically observe. It's up to the senior member on how they would like to be involved. 
please, as a senior member, you, you do not need to be required. You Feel free to participate as desired, but you are not required to go running with the cadets and, like, doing all of the active stuff. Totally up to you. And for the cadets, you are supposed to participate with the team and be part of that experience. There's also leadership. So leadership could be drill and ceremonies. It could be an actual class. And it... The point of leadership is to teach different concepts that are both within and outside of the Learn to Lead books and different psychological principles that might be useful for members as they go through the program and then go on beyond just Civil Air Patrol. There's also aerospace education, which can cover like model rocketry or talking about some of the concepts within aerospace dimensions or the journey of flight. There are AEX activities, which are the Aerospace Education Excellence Award activities, where your squadron does a certain number of them in order to get this award each year. And that could include the Goddard rockets, that could include the fizzy flyers, that could include, like, there's a, a hovercraft one that you could do, like, a CD where you glue a bottle cap sort of thing and a, a balloon too and then you just blow up the balloon and then you let it hover around there are a lot of different activities but th those are some fun things that you might get to do as part of the ae section and sometimes people do like current events or discuss things that are happening within aerospace just so that people are aware of the advancements and excitingness that's happening in air and space there's also emergency services so if you're familiar with emergency services, that's the portion of Civil Air Patrol that focuses on search and rescue operations, and that can include ground or air operations. So senior members and cadets who are over the age of 18 can participate and become qualified in air crew. So that includes mission scanner, mission observer, airborne photographer, and mission pilot. And then on the ground side, Cadets and senior members can get qualified in a number of things. Senior members and those over 18 can do more, like ground branch director and air branch director. But, like, cadets can get ground team member one, two, and three. And one is the top one. Three is the lowest one that you can get. Or, like, your general emergency services qualification, which is the GES 116, which I have discussed before in a previous video if you're not quite sure what that is and you want more information. And the last one that I did not mention is character development, which focuses on developing moral character of cadets, including talking about things like mental health and awareness, being a good wingman, and supporting others morally, character development instructors, and chaplains support that side of the program. The things that units are required to cover are character development, leadership, physical training, and aerospace education. ES is more of an optional thing, though I do highly recommend doing it, just so that cadets get a well-balanced participation in the program. But let's say there are months that your unit may not have time to do everything, Typically, ES is one of the first things that kind of gets knocked off the list because it isn't required for promotions. And a lot of times cadets join for the aerospace education aspects and like going towards their private pilot's license. Not necessarily everyone, but I really highly recommend trying to emphasize all areas equally. Okay, so going back to what an actual meeting is, there's typically two blocks that are about an hour each. Meetings typically start between 6, 6 to 7 p.m. in your local time. Sometimes they start at 6.30, sometimes they start later than that. It depends on what the squadron does. They typically end around 9 p.m. in local time. So... During those blocks, you, you might do like two 45-minute blocks and have breaks interspersed. It just varies. Typically, breaks are good for people to have because it gives them a chance to go to the bathroom, get some water, um, maybe like talk to friends just for a little bit and catch up because it's good to be social once in a while. And I know I enjoyed like quick doing a break and just hanging out with people, chatting with them about school and all of that when I was a cadet. But please note that not all units are the same. Some units do emphasize certain areas a little bit more, like they might have more activities that are 
AE related or ES related because that's the strength that they have and enjoy it. Take advantage of the opportunities that are available. Sometimes there's going to be stuff on the state level, also known as the wing level. Sometimes it'll be like in your general area, which is called the group level. And sometimes it'll be like on the region level, which is like multiple states combined into one grouping. So feel free to look into the different opportunities. Talk to your squadron's leadership if you're interested in learning more about like being involved on those higher level things, like at the group level the wing level and the region level, because there are training opportunities outside of your own unit. That's really something that I would like to highlight. Not all units really publicize information about what's going on beyond the unit. And if that's the case, then you can join your wings Facebook page. Most wings, if not all of them have a Facebook page, including the international squadrons. Look at the websites associated with your region and your wing. They typically have their calendars posted there. And a lot of wings have been moving over to Microsoft Teams. So if your wing has Microsoft Teams, you can actually add their calendar to your calendar and you'll, you'll be able to see, okay, I'm looking at my calendar. I'm available at this time. And look, they've got this nice training block of a SARX or a search and rescue exercise this upcoming weekend. I want to do it, but make sure that you look on a semi-frequent basis because you should sign up sooner rather than later. So after the two blocks are completed, the unit typically does closing formation, sometimes promotions and closing announcements. And that's typically done by the squadron commander and other people who have announcements to make. If there are promotions, some promotion ceremonies vary. Sometimes they're, they take up a whole block and sometimes they, they're just done at the end of the unit meetings. It depends on the size of the unit mostly, because if it's a larger unit, then you'll expect more promotions for way more people versus a smaller unit, which may see like four promotions at most. And that typically doesn't take too long, but sometimes the cadet commander will say a few things about the member and what they had accomplished. And then they'll take shake salute, scoot and move on to the next person. It, it varies between each unit, but when you first join, you may not be aware of what's going on, but as you see a few meetings, then you'll become familiar with the process, how things are done. Also, one thing that we don't really do during COVID, but we do in in-person meetings is something called signing in at the beginning of the meeting. And so when you first show up, systems do vary. Some people use an electronic system and some people use a paper system. With the paper system, you typically sign your name next to your CAP ID and your, your name and everything with the time that you sign in. And then if you're a guest, there's typically a slot at the end of the sign-in sheet that you can put in your email address and your name and whoever is like hosting you at the meeting. If you are going and there's an electronic system, they typically have like a little scanner or a computer available where you put in your CAP ID and then you're signed into the meeting and it just automatically records what time you showed up. So I think that's everything that I wanted to discuss for what you should expect from a typical unit meeting. If you do have any questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and that is all folks. Until next time, toodles.